Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We welcome you to this, our latest and greatest edition of PPP Forgiveness. I will be hosting today's meeting and our presenter, of course, is the brilliant and talented Angel Medina. And we'll turn it over to Angel in a few minutes. My name is Veronica Birch Flores. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at First National Bank of South Miami. And it's my pleasure to welcome you today. I've been at the bank 21 years now, and I can say as 41 years as a community banker, I have never seen such a challenging and difficult time as we have been facing, both in concerns of health and welfare, our economy, the unprecedented uncertainty that we have all faced in the last few months. We were hoping in mid-March, this was going to be a two-week journey and uh, certainly hoping by the beginning of April, our lives would be back to normal. And here we are five months later and it's anything but normal and the future is still quite uncertain. So the CARES Act that was passed in March allowed for this this loan that hopefully will be able to be forgiven for you that then will become a grant and we all went through this together and we were very happy to be here for our clients and for the community and our program allowed for more than eight thousand jobs to potentially be saved with 80 million dollars in loans given and we were very proud of the work that we did and at the time we thought it'd be an eight week period and of course the there's been nothing um static about the ppp program it's been fluid and dynamic and has changed and continues to change and evolve we think that it's pretty much done with the changes and it's time to apply for forgiveness or is it because one of the things we're still waiting to know is will there be a blanket forgiveness for loans up to 150,000 or more? This would be great news for all of you with a loan at 150,000 or less. And frankly, really good news for banks as well, because that would, for most banks across the board, it would be about 80% of the number of loans that we processed, we would save us a lot of work on having to go through the forgiveness process. But Angel will address that a bit more as he goes through his presentation. So with that, again, I thank you for joining us. I thank you for your business. There is a Q&A section. So if at any time during today's session, you'd like to ask a question, you can type it in there. And at the end of the session, I will pose those questions to Angel. But you're going to find the next hour information packed. So any questions that you have, then please post them there and we will get them answered. Thank you. I turn it over to my very good friend, brilliant banker and guru of all things PPP, Angel Medina. Well, good afternoon and welcome everybody. So happy to, uh, to have you join us for yet another update of uh, the PPP program. Um, in today's session, what we're going to talk about is uh, forgiveness. Uh, is it now or later? Uh, essentially, we're going to tell you um, and share with you what has happened since you received your PPP monies and ask you, are you ready for forgiveness? So first, let me begin by telling you what's been happening at the SBA. Um, they have finally, as of August 10th, begun to accept forgiveness applications. What they're no longer accepting are new PPP applications. That ended on August 8th, leaving some money on the table, mind you. As of July 31st, over $520 billion in PPP loans were approved and over $32 billion were approved in Florida. And now, what's happening in Congress? That's right, I'm not on mute, nothing much. Um, there's a lot of talk, uh, but nothing has yet 
happen. So let me share with you some of the things that they're talking about. As Ver Veronica said at the opening of this um, presentation, they are considering blanket forgiveness for loans at $150,000 or less. Blanket forgiveness, as we understand it, is going to mean that instead of having to complete the either the Form 3508EZ or the Form 3508, um, you will just simply have to complete um, an affirmation that the monies were used appropriately uh, and uh, within the guidance, not guidance, but within the requirements of the program. And that would give you a blanket forgiveness. They're considering expanding the non-payroll expense. Frankly, I'm not sure how beneficial that's going to be because it's not like they're going to give you more money. It's the same pool of money. And now by having expanded the program uh, in the last uh, set of changes from eight weeks to 24 weeks, I think it really gives most, if not all businesses, more than ample time. Because if you remember in your application process, it was two and a half months worth of your average payroll. Well, when you only had eight weeks to spend that, it could have been a little tight with 24 weeks, which is almost six months. Um, there's quite a bit you can spend it on. And we're gonna talk about uh, a few uh, adjustments to that in a minute. And uh, what's good news for some businesses will be that they are considering a PPP2, which will be for uh, those businesses that have been uh, severely impacted during their covered period. In other words, their revenues, and there, there's discussion that their revenues must have declined by at least 35%. There's also discussion about 50%. So uh, whether it happens or not, I'm not sure. But if it does, it's going to require that uh, there would have been meaningful impact to revenues for your business during the covered period in order for you to apply for more money. Since we last spoke, um, they did come out with an abbreviated forgiveness uh, application, and that was the form 3508EZ. And uh, I'll touch on that in a minute. There are some requirements and the requirements center around the FTE reductions, whether you've been able to open or not, whether or not you've reduced salaries by more than 25% to any of your employees. And if some of those conditions exist, you'll be able to use an abbreviated uh, forgiveness application. They did provide clarity on owner employee payroll cost forgiveness. Now, some of you that are on this that are owner employees, I'm not sure you're going to really like it, um, but uh, you'll hear from me in a minute on that. And uh, they provided clarity on uh, the businesses that can use the alternative covered period. And that clarity is really for only those businesses that have weekly or bi-weekly payroll. So if you pay two times a month or uh, if you pay monthly, you're not going to be able to use the alternative covered period. You're only going to be able to use the covered period. And I'll describe that in a second. Um, they also provided guidance to government contractors, and the guidance to government contractors really works like this. Um, if you're a government contractor where uh, you are able to, it, it, these are typically for cost plus contractors where, for example, you um, send a, an invoice to the uh, government under your contract for an engineer and that engineer uh, made $10,000. If that's within the covered period and that's your revenue, you're not going to be able to also uh, apply for uh, forgiveness for that same employee. So, so it's really a concept, again, of double dipping. You can't get the same money from the government twice. 
Finally, uh, safe harbor, uh, you remember the term, uh, and the last day to spend any PPP dollars is uh, was moved to December 31st, 2020. So first, the most important question is, are you comfortable already that you'll be given full forgiveness of your loan? And so some of the things that uh, I think are important before you consider uh, applying for forgiveness is first, confirm that you've spent the money within the agreed and newly updated parameters. Uh, as of today, we've provided you information on all of the criteria. There's a, a few good uh, nuances to some of the covered expenses that I'll uh, speak about in a, in a minute. You're really going to have to make a decision whether you're going to use the eight week or 24 week covered period. Um, frankly, uh, in my opinion, there's no disadvantage to using the 24 week. And in fact, uh, by using the 24 week, you'll be able to include much more expenses and I'll explain why that's important and um, are you using the covered period or the alternative covered period important that these decisions be made before you begin to uh, apply are you eligible for the abbreviated uh, 3508EZ and those are three questions and if you can answer any one of those three questions favorably then yes you uh, can use the abbreviated uh, forgiveness process. Do you have all of your backup information ready and organized? Quite frankly, um, if you do and you've gone through all those steps, the automated process of applying for forgiveness is going to take you 10 to 15 minutes. I, I don't really expect it to take you more. Now, getting ready for that may take you several hours. And do you have your SBA and bank loan number? Uh, those are uh, two important numbers that you have to have for your application. Um, applying through our web portal that uh, we have now opened up, um, it will populate automatically. So you really don't have to uh, worry about that. But what's the rush? I, our opinion is take your time. It's better to ensure that you receive 100% forgiveness than to fall short. It's also better that if you had a $100,000 loan, yet you spent $200,000 in allowable expenses, put them in. It doesn't hurt you. They're, they're not going to give you more money. But if at any point in the process, there's a expense that you put in, maybe by mistake, maybe it's disallowed, it won't return a number that is less than 100% of your loan amount. So I'm encouraging all of our uh, borrowers to ensure that they put in every single cost. Don't get stuck on, oh, I got to my $100,000 already, I'm done, I'm not going to worry about all these other expenses that I did. No, continue taking full advantage of that. That way you can be assured that you're going to achieve 100% uh, forgiveness. So some of the things you do have to consider is in your mind, in your uh, agenda, in your outlook, somewhere, establish a drop dead date when you absolutely positively have to have everything in. Now, it, it's very generous right now because the very last day that you can uh, apply for forgiveness is going to be 10 months after the end of the covered period. So as you can see, uh, let, me, let me give you an example of what that might look like. Um, this company, ABC Company, received a PPP loan on April 20th. Uh, we've tried to uh, be consistent in these numbers so that when uh, and if uh, you decide uh, you want to look at some of our prior presentations or listen to some of our prior webinars, there's some consistency in these numbers and it's easier to follow. Well, if you received your PPP loan on April 20th, and that's the date that it got funded, 
then the last day on an eight week covered period would be June 14th. Now, in this case, this company pays on a weekly basis. This hypothetical company pays on a weekly basis. And therefore, they chose not to adjust their payroll cycles, but to use the alternative covered period for payroll, which means that the beginning of the next full pay cycle for this company is April 26. So in that case, using the alternative covered period, the last day of that period is June 20th. But look at the difference now if they go to a 24 week covered period. The covered period doesn't end until October 4th, October 4th. And the last day of the 24 week alternative covered period is not until October 10th. So quite a bit of time. Granted, the last day for all PPP loan covered period is December 31st. So if you got your loan later, uh, you might run into uh, a January 2021 part of the cover period, but know that December 31st is a hard date um, after which no uh, other expenses uh, will be allowed. So you see, if my covered period ended on October 4th. I still have 10 months after that to apply for forgiveness. Now, if I apply on the 10th month plus one day, no more. I can no longer apply for forgiveness and I owe the money to my bank. So that's what I mean by establishing a hard drop dead date. If you're a procrastinator, You've got to make that happen. So um, I also want to make you aware that it doesn't hurt you to wait um, because a borrower is not required to make any kind of payment, no, no payment of principal, no payment of interest, until the forgiveness amount has been remitted to the lender by the SBA. And I'm going to share with you in a moment that timeline. So you submit your application. The bank has 60 days to process it. It'll tell you whether uh, they're, they're, they're forgiving you or we'll, we'll tell you we're forgiving you partly or wholly. And then the SBA has 90 days to settle with us. And it's not until they settle with us that if it's a partial settlement, that you have to even begin to make any kind of a payment. So some of the things that you need to consider um, because this will ensure that you understand whether you can use the abbreviated 3508EZ is have you made any reductions to FTE that you have not rehired within the time frame, including the safe harbor time frame, have there been any salary adjustments greater than twenty-five percent that have not been reinstated to their um, full uh, pre-COVID salary uh, within the time frame and within the safe harbor time frame? And of course, have you captured all your forgivable expenses? Again, notwithstanding that they may exceed the PPP loan amount. And just to remind you, the safe harbor time frame is December 31, 2020. Let's briefly discuss what's forgivable. For more details on what's forgivable, um, you can refer back to at least the last uh, webinar that is recorded and on our website. But at a high level, payroll costs for non-owner employees is, of course, gross payroll costs, vacation, sick leave, medical, family leave, you remember those. Um, group health benefits, including vision and dental. So um, I, I know that we've said that before, 
but I'll state it again. When you talk about health benefits, it's not just the health benefits, but it's vision and dental as well, and uh, any uh, bonuses that were paid out. Now, there are caps. Maximum forgivable compensation for any non-owner employee, and I stress non-owner employee, and you'll see why in a minute. If, it's the, if you choose the eight-week period, it's $15,385. If you use the 24-week period, it's $46,153. Let me give you some clarity that the SBA has provided regarding payroll costs. Payroll costs includes all costs paid during the covered period are eligible for forgiveness. Payroll costs that were incurred during the covered period, but were paid after the covered period are eligible for forgiveness as long as they were paid by the following payroll date. So to clarify that a little bit more is if the last week, whether it's week eight or week 24, doesn't get paid until after the covered or the alternative covered period, as long as that payment is made, that following payroll cycle, you can include it. Also, um, the uh, alternative covered period may only be used by businesses whose pay cycle are weekly or bi-weekly. So what do the other companies do that pay twice a month or monthly or different than weekly or bi-weekly, you're going to have to prorate your pay cycles based on your covered period. There is no alternative covered period for you. Here's where it gets interesting. Payroll costs for owner employees, it gets a little more complicated. First of all, Compensation is capped by aggregating across all the companies that received PPP and maxed out at the numbers I'm going to show uh, below. So let me restate that because, you know, we, we early on had uh, a number of entrepreneurs that had multiple companies and they were getting paid through multiple companies. Um, and let's just assume that John, the entrepreneur with three companies, was getting paid $100,000 by each of those companies. Well, John is now going to be capped for forgiveness purposes. You can still pay, pay John whatever he wants, but for forgiveness, John is going to be capped only $100,000 against all those companies that received PPP. That is a new uh, interpretation by uh, the SBA uh, based on their opinion of what is consistent with the spirit of the act. Also, another clarification, compensation is capped at two and a half times the average monthly 2019 earnings. What does that mean? So that means if John, one company, John, paid himself $50,000 in 2019, but bumped his salary up in 2020 to $100,000, he can only be eligible for two and a half times the average monthly of the $50,000, not the $100,000. Even if in January and February of 2020, he had already started paying himself based on the uh, $100,000. So that's an, yet another um, interpretation, clarification, however you want to call it, but um, that's another change. Now, let, let me talk about health benefits for a minute. If you are an S Corp, the health benefits for owner employees are ineligible for any S Corp owner that owns 2% or more of the company. And any 
family member of that owner employee that works for the company, also their health benefit is not included in the forgivable expenses. In other words, you can't include them in your health uh, benefits computation. Finally, general partners, you know, sometimes in these partnerships, general partners may be paid at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter or something uh, similar to that. In this case, what they're saying is that for a general partner's compensation to be included in payroll costs, it must be paid within the covered period. Paid, not incurred, but paid. So as you can see, this chart is a little busy, uh, but it provides some clarity around the different types of corporations. Of course, if you're an LLC, it depends, you know, how uh, you file your taxes. What about non-payroll costs? Well, they gave a little more flexibility in terms of non-payroll costs. So what they said is, if you incurred prior to the covered period, but you paid during the covered period, you're eligible for forgiveness. So um, you paid the March Florida Power and Light bill on April 25th. Remember, your cover period began April 20th. You can pay that. That's okay. Similarly, if you incurred it during the covered period, but paid it in the next uh, cycle. So for example, let's go back to our example. In September slash October, first week of October, you incurred your power costs, but you paid it in at the end of October after that 24 week cover period that you're going to be able to include as well. So they, they essentially flanked your covered period. And as long as you paid it, um, they allowed those costs to be included there as well. Um, and finally, they gave clarity on what a transportation utility expense is. And um, because we don't have that in Florida, uh, we were not familiar with it, but uh, apparently there are uh, states or local governments that have a transportation utility fee, and that's what they've defined as a transportation utility expense. So this one, uh, this slide is um, a little busy, but these are essentially the three questions that allow you to use the 3508 EZ. The first one is real easy. Are you self-employed, an independent contractor, or a sole proprietor? You had no employees at the time of the PPP application, and you didn't include employee salary in the computation of the average monthly payroll. In other words, it's just you. You can use the easy form. The other one is you didn't reduce anybody's wages by more than 25% during the covered or the alternative covered period when you compare it to the wages that they were earning between January 1st and March 31st. And this is conjunctive. In so other words, both have to be, yes, that applies to me. And you didn't reduce the number of employees nor the hours worked between January 1st and the end of the covered period. Now, Safe Harbor um, applies here. You can ignore FTE reductions if there was an inability to rehire uh, individuals who were employees on February 15th, 2020, if the, you tried to hire, uh, but you couldn't find similarly qualified individuals. Now, frankly, you have until December 31st to try to find those qualified individuals before you can say, oh, I couldn't find them. So if, if you're going to try to uh, latch onto that, you're going to have to wait until January to apply for 
forgiveness. Or um, the employee was offered the position um, and they refused. Now remember, I'm gonna stress it, I've been stressing it since uh, the first time we talked about forgiveness and that stress is documentation, documentation, documentation. It's critical that you have all the right documentation. The third question is, you didn't reduce the wages. I talked about that already in question number two. And your business couldn't operate during the covered period at the same level of activity as before February 15, 2020, because you were in compliance with the requirements of Health and Human Services or the CDC or OSHA. Now, it's gonna be very, very important that you have chapter and verse here, um, that you truly understand what is, what was the specific guidance that was provided, what was the uh, written guidance that was provided, and then you can, uh, you can use that. Let's remember also here that um, the government has always been focused on those individuals that earn under $100,000. And therefore, when they talk about adjusting salaries by 25%, or they talk about reductions in FTE, they're really concerned with those individuals that made less than $100,000 or less. So if you can answer any of these three questions affirmatively, then you can use the 3508 easy. So let's talk about some timeline. What can you expect? Um, once you're ready, you can go onto our website and lock into the PPP hyperlink that we've provided. Um, we'll have that up and running by tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, if you are ready, and we have had a few clients that have reached out to us and said, look, I know I'm one of the first, but I'm ready. I want to do it. I want to get on. They have emailed Veronica. They've emailed me. We've provided them the link, um, and they've gone through the process. And it appears to be a rather simple process. In fact, we've already um, approved uh, a couple of uh, forgiveness at, of course, the 100% level. But don't let that influence you. Please take your time. Make sure you include as much expenses as possible. Um, you never know. Um, we approved it. Now it's up to the SBA. You never know what they may or may not do. And you want to make sure that you get 100%. Uh, forgiveness. Once you've completed the application, you'll submit it to the bank. The bank uh, has 60 days to process and, and either uh, give you uh, full forgiveness, partial forgiveness, or no forgiveness. But in any event, the bank will notify you. And then once approved, the bank will submit for payment to the SBA and then the SBA has 90 days to confirm forgiveness and submit their payment of principal and interest to the bank. A couple of points to clarify here real quick. One, if it's 100% forgiveness, there's nothing to worry about. They're gonna return the principal to us and pay us the, um, the full interest on the loan. If it's partial, they're gonna send us the partial they're going to send us only the interest on their portion. You would be responsible for the remainder of the loan and the interest that accrued since the date of um, the original loan. So in this case, uh, it would have been a since April 20 of this year. And that's it. Um, you know, try to keep it simple. Uh, try to keep it straightforward. Uh, we do have several other forgiveness webinars that uh, we have on our website that are available for you that go into a lot more detail on how to compute the FTE, how to compute the reductions in salary and, 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 and all of those finer points. But I felt that it was important that I spare you and only uh, provide you with the information you need 
today to consider whether you're ready for forgiveness or not. Veronica, I turn it now back over to you. Thank you, everyone. You're on mute. Thank you, Angel. We do have a few questions that have been posted. So if you have a question, put it in the q and A. I I uh, will get to those first, and then we'll hit a couple that were in chat, too. So um, first question from Martha. If we process payroll biweekly, do we still qualify for the full 24-week period? Yes. You choose the 24-week period, right? You have the option. You choose 8 or 24, but... Uh, that has nothing to do with uh, uh, your your payroll. Okay. Can you apply for a PP2 if you've already applied for forgiveness on the first loan? Yes. This is, this is a whole separate program. Um, we don't know if they'll approve PPP2 yet, but if they do, it's going to be a whole separate uh, program. You'll, you'll uh, yes. Thank you. 